Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to the fiscal year 2024 Capital Projects Grant Webinar. My name is Hilary Amna. I use the pronoun she, they, and I'm the Grants Program Lead for Civic Arts at the City of Berkeley. Uh, this is being recorded, so if you need to refer back to this webinar, it will be available to you on our website in the coming weeks. And before we get into the main content, I'd like to do our city's land acknowledgement. The city of Berkeley recognizes that the community we live in was built on the territory of the Huchun, the ancestral and unceded land of the Chochenyo speaking Ohlone people, the ancestors and descendants of the sovereign Verona band of Alameda County. This land was and continues to be of great importance to all of the Ohlone tribes and descendants of the Verona band. As we begin our webinar, we acknowledge and honor the original inhabitants of Berkeley, the documented 5,000 year history of a vibrant community at the West Berkeley Shell Mound, and the Ohlone people who continue to reside in the East Bay. We recognize that Berkeley's residents have and continue to benefit from the use and occupation of this unceded stolen land since the city of Berkeley's incorporation in 1878. As stewards of the laws, regulating the city of Berkeley. It is not only vital that we recognize the history of this land, but also recognize that the Ohlone people are present members of Berkeley and other East Bay communities today. The city of Berkeley will continue to build relationships with the Lejean tribe and create meaningful actions that uphold the intention of this land acknowledgement. Okay, so I'll quickly take us through today's agenda. First, I'll give you an overview of Civic Arts, our unit within the city of Berkeley. We'll go over some important dates for the grant cycle. And um, these dates for this particular grant program are slightly different than our other grant programs. So I'll highlight those differences. Uh, we'll go over the grant program details, including eligibility and the program requirements. We'll go through the application process and talk about the application elements and go through a short submittable tutorial. That is the um, application you will use to submit your application. Submittable is our grants management um, system. We'll talk about the application review process and go over the review criteria and the scoring scale. And then some general grant writing tips how you can get help with your application through technical assistance. And then at the end of this presentation, we'll have time for questions and answers. Um, as you think of them, feel free to include your questions in the question and answer box in your Zoom window. Um, but there will be an opportunity to raise your hand and you can uh, verbally ask your questions at the end as well. Um, I do ask that you keep your questions pretty um, general, if possible. If you have questions that are very specific to your uh, the project you want to propose or to your organization uh, with unique circumstances, uh, we can connect uh, individually one-on-one, -on -one, and I'll let you know how to do that in a later slide. Okay, so our mission is to support a culturally vibrant and diverse arts ecosystem within the city of Berkeley, and we do that in several ways. One of those ways is our grants program, and that program funds artists, nonprofit organizations, and festivals. Um, other ways that we fulfill our mission are through our public art program and by creating access to arts and cultural experiences for residents and visitors of Berkeley. And just this year, we've added one more program, a new program in partnership with uh, the Berkeley Public Library. And that is our Berkeley Poet Laureate program, which just had its inaugural run uh, this past year. So we have a new Poet Laureate starting in 2024. OK, 
Okay, um, on the right side of the slide, you'll see our cultural equity statement, but I always like to highlight some concrete ways that our grants program is committed to making our program more equitable. So uh, last year, we started increasing the cultural equity review criterion percentage, um, how much that is worth the total score. And then we've also or refined the language on that particular review criterion. So hopefully we will start to be able to analyze our grantees and see the impact that that is making over time and adjust if, you know, if we need to. We've also started offering translation services for our guidelines and application. And if you submit an application in a different language, we would be able to translate it into English for our review panelists. The guidelines have all been reviewed by the city's disability services program for accessibility, and we have recruited a larger review panelist pool. So those are the folks who will be reviewing your grant applications. And we continue to prioritize black, indigenous, and people of color as our grant review panelists. And then um, also we've done targeted outreach to organizations and communities who may not be familiar with our grant programs yet. And we've also included a new grant category just this year, the Arts Programs Grant, uh, which is intended to help us uh, reach audiences and communities we haven't reached uh, with a very specific um, grant program. Um, so I'll go over some ex uh, our important dates for this grant. This grant does have an accelerated timeline because the funding for it is from a budget adjustment from fiscal year 2024 allocations. So you may have seen our other grant programs have a um, FY25 in front of them, but this one is an FY24. And that is, that's because of that budget allocation. So we're, we're trying to get this money out the door quickly. Um, the grant applications are now open and the deadline to apply is February 21st at 1159. Um, and then I will repeat this uh, a couple of times throughout this presentation, but even I want to remind you, even though we have an 1159 p.m. deadline, um, staff and likely submittables customer support will not be available um, after regular business hours. And for Civic Arts, that's about 4.30 p.m. Um, grant review panelists will score the applications March through April, and then we'll schedule a grant panel review meeting uh, in April or possibly the very first week of May. Uh, but ap all applicants will be notified about the day of the public grant review panel meeting, so uh, you have the option to attend. Um, and then the grant subcommittee for this grant will meet on May 6th to discuss the funding scenarios, which will be brought to the Civic Arts Commission meeting uh, that is happening on in May, uh, uh, on May 22nd. Uh, and that meeting will be where all of the awards are approved. And then early June is when all of our applicants will be notified with award or decline letters uh, from the results of the grant review panel and the commission's approval of the grants. All right, so this is a this is a brand new grant category and a little background on it. Uh, there was a council, a city council referral to civic arts staff to create this program. And I think that was in 2019. Uh, but uh, due to a multitude of circumstances, including staffing, uh, we haven't been able to create the program or get funding for the program until now. So now the um, program is here with that fiscal year 2024 city budget adjustment. And I believe that was just approved this month. Um, so we do have the funds for this grant. And this grant is to fund capital projects or asset acquisitions to help arts organizations stay in Berkeley. And uh, projects 
that are proposed from organizations that have revenues of under $1 million will be prioritized, as well as projects that increase the organization's ability for people with physical disabilities. Um, so those two things will be prioritized in this particular grant program. Um, you are welcome to apply even if you're, you don't meet those priority areas. Um, but it is, we just want to make it clear that those will be um, prioritized throughout this grant program. And you'll see that in our review criteria, how that is, how that is evidenced. Um, for this grant program, you can request between $2,000 and $150,000 for project related expenses. Okay, and for, for the purposes of this grant program, we're defining a capital project as a project that helps maintain, improve, or adds to the organization's infrastructure. Uh, it results in an acquisition of a new asset or new construction, improvements, expansion, renovation, rehabilitation, repairs, or replacement of an existing facility and other infrastructure assets and then located in the city of Berkeley. And uh, capital projects are expected to result in long-term useful life and long-term benefit. Um, so some other, some eligibility points that I want to make sure you're all aware of are that to apply for this funding, you must be a 501c3 nonprofit tax exempt organization. And that 501c3 organization that is, a is the applicant organization must have a Berkeley address. And that address uh, needs to be address you're registered with um, the federal government for your IRS 990 tax purposes. Your organization also needs to be an arts organization. And this is defined as an entity with a primary purpose of providing arts, creative or cultural programming or services. And the organization's purpose will be assessed and verified by civic arts staff. Uh, and we will use the organization's website, its mission and its, its core activities, as well as the IRS national taxonomy of exempt entities with um, commonly known as with NTEE. Um, those codes, how your organization appears um, as your, with those codes, what the primary purpose is. So you have to be a nonprofit, you have to be an arts organization. And the other thing that I want to make sure you're aware of is that if your organization has previously received any type of capital project funding from the city of Berkeley, um, usually in the form of direct allocations from the mayor's budget or city council budget, uh, you would not be eligible for this grant opportunity in this pilot program. Um, so it doesn't mean you would be excluded for future uh, cycles if we continued this grant program, but for this pilot, you would not be eligible. One requirement that you'll uh, need to make sure you're aware of is that you'll need to document the project throughout the process and completion. And this can be uh, with photography or you can take video, make sure you have written documents or other types of media, but you'll need to document the process uh, throughout the project through completion. Um, another requirement is that it has to be in Berkeley. The project that is being funded, not only does the org applicant organization need to be in Berkeley, but this, the project that you're actually doing, all of the work needs to happen in Berkeley and the funds need to go toward expenses that are in Berkeley. Um, 
and funded activities must take place within the grant activity period. And this grant activity period is 13 months. Our grants are normal, normally have a 12 month grant activity period, but it starts June 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. So that's what you should aim your project to um, start and be finished within. And then a final report would be due July 30th, which is 30 days after the grant activity period ends. Um, other requirements are that any part of your project must meet ADA standards. Um, so you'll need to ensure that. And additionally, any construction prog projects will need to provide evidence of the organization's building ownership or a long-term lease. And if you are an organization applying with a long-term lease, you will need to make sure that that lease specifically includes permission to make physical modifications to the building. So this is for um, construction related projects where you're, you're doing something physically to the building. Uh, we will need to see that it's a, if you don't own the building, um, that you have permission from uh, whomever you're, you're leasing the space from to make those physical modifications. Okay, um, all application materials will need to be submitted electronically using our submittable grants management system. And again, that deadline is February 21st at 11.59 p.m. For this grant, you can enable collaborators. So more than one um, submittable account owner could work on the application. If you need uh, multiple people from your organization to contribute to the application answers, um, that is an option for you in this grant application. Um, and then no extensions will be granted. So I do highly recommend applying early in case you run into any technical issues, um, starting the application early and then uh, make, submitting it early. Um, technical assistance is also available throughout the application period. So starting now through um, the day of the deadline, again, not, not after about 4.30 PM on the day of the deadline though, um, I can help you with um, any questions you have about applying. This application includes some questions that will require you to enter text and some that will require you to upload files. Um, you'll also need the federal employer identification number um, or your EIN um, of your organization before you begin the application. So what you'll need to upload are your two tax returns from 2021, 2022, and your work samples um, or support materials. And if you're doing a construction related project, you'll also need to upload a letter of agreement between your organization and the third party uh, doing the construction. Um, and also, if you are doing a construction project, you do need to upload that proof of your organization's ownership or that long-term lease um, that discussed in the, the last slide. <clears throat> um, and then all of the narrative questions and the budget form, you will enter text directly into the application. And we'll go over, um, actually, on the next slide, we'll go over um, what the application looks like. And you can see those fields where you will enter text and the ones where you will upload. So uh, this is what the landing page for our uh, grants portal looks like. If you do not have a submittable account, you can sign up on this tab right here, the sign up tab. If you already have one, you can log in here. If you've forgotten your password, you can reset it using this link, uh, the forgot question mark, um, this link right here. Um, 
Creating an account is free. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. And I think I want to, I'll go ahead and do, uh, I'll do a new share and we'll go through the application. So this is what it looks like when you are getting to our grants landing page and we're going to apply for the, the FY24 capital grants projects. Before you begin, please click on this link that takes you directly to the grant guidelines and please read them thoroughly. Um, that's going to help guide you with everything you need to know about this grant. And when you're ready to apply, you'll click submit. And I've already done that here. Um, you, before you get to the application, um, I've already done this so we can get to this page, but you'll need to enter your organization's EIN. I'm using a, uh, a ineligible organization just as a test um, to show you the application, but you'll need to enter that and eligibility questions before you get to this page. If you wanted to enable collaborators, so multiple people could work on this application, you'll click this link here and you can add folks um, or give them access to this application. The, the top part of this application um, is mostly contact information. Uh, it's not going to be scored. But as you can see, um, most of the fields are required. You'll see a red asterisk where um, fields are required. The website's not required, and that might be the only one, uh, only field that's not required. But you will not be able to submit your application unless all of the required fields are, um, are completed. So again, this top part is not scored by the panelists. This is an example of where you would upload a file. So you will need your 2021 federal tax return, your um, 990 or 990 easy, uh, and you will upload it here. You can drag and drop or choose the file from there. And now we're to the area that the panelists will score. So as you can see, uh, you will see the, to the um, topic of the review criteria, some details and how much of the, this particular review criteria is worth your um, total your score. And the questions directly beneath this review criterion uh, correlate to it. You will see also in the areas where you need to enter text, you will see the word limit here on the right bottom corner. And as you enter text, you will see how many um, words you have remaining as you finish your answer. Let's see. Um, I also want to point out that some of the questions include additional instructions beneath the uh, text field. So please pay attention to those when they appear. Uh, for example, here's one for the your revenue question. And then we're moving on to the next review criterion, and you'll see the details below it bulleted, um, the percentage that it it is for your total score, and then the questions that correlate to that review criterion beneath it. For your project budget, you will enter the numbers in this budget form on the revenue section, which is the top two parts, the contributed revenue and the earned income you will need to put projected or committed uh, where a line item occurs. So if you know you're getting 
$1,000 in advertising sales, you could put committed in this um, field, and then you're putting a thousand here. And um, beneath it are the expenses. You will just put the expense amounts in this column, and it will all auto calculate to then tell you a surplus or de deficit. Here's where you'll make any notes. If you need to explain anything to the panelists about items in your budget, And then the rest of the questions are pretty straightforward as far as entering your text and the word limits. When you get to the bottom, you can either submit your application or you can save draft. This application will auto save, but I do recommend pressing save draft as often as you feel necessary, just to make sure you're not losing any of your work that you've input into the application. Um, so if you aren't quite ready to submit, submit, you can press save draft. And I want to show you what it might look like if you're coming to back to your application. So when you log in, um, it might look like this. And some, some people may not have any, this, this screen may be blank. Um, the default, tab that it lands on is my submissions. And so if you haven't submitted an application from your account, there may be nothing here. But if you click on this tab, this is where you can find all of the applications you have in draft. And you can select continue um, right here. So this is where you can continue your application. Now, if you've been invited, to contribute to an application, but you didn't start the application, you're not the application owner, you'll find your application here in the collaborations tab. So I just wanted to show you that because some, some folks do get concerned if they don't see their um, application when they log in and get very concerned. Uh, once you do submit your application, you will be able to um, download a PDF of your application so you have a record of what you submitted. Um, I also want to emphasize that if you have any specific technical questions about your submittable account, like if you've gotten locked out, you can't remember your password, um, you are having trouble navigating the interface, I unfortunately cannot help you with that because I don't have access to seeing your account, um, but you can contact Submittable's customer support and uh, they get back to you relatively quickly, like within 24 hours. Uh, but again, if you're, that's why I wouldn't also wait until the deadline to apply um, because they may need that 24 hours to get back to you if you have a technical issue. Um, once the deadline passes and you've um, submitted your applications, uh, staff will review all the applications for eligibility and then assign those eligible applications to the grant review panelists. And our panelists will have several weeks to review the applications using the review criteria and the scoring scale, which I'll touch on uh, shortly. And then we'll meet virtually over Zoom to discuss each applicant. And again, all applicants will be notified about the status of your application and about the date and time of the public grant review panel. And once the panel concludes, staff will review the scores and come up with funding scenarios. We do have a total of $300,000 for this award or for this grant category. And the funding scenarios are going to depend on a number of factors. One, how many applicants we have. Two, what the final scores are from the applications. And then three, the applicant request amounts. Um, we don't know what those request amounts will be, but as you may have seen, it's, it's a, a wide range that the request amounts can be. Uh, between 2,000 and 150,000. So all of those factors are going to determine um, what funding scenarios we bring to the full commission. Um, but 
before it gets to the full commission, it will be discussed by the grant subcommittee and they take their final recommendations uh, to that May uh, Civic Arts Commission meeting where they will be approved, the awards will be approved. Um, all Civic Arts Commission meetings are open to the public and applicants will also be notified about the date and time and location of the meeting where the grants will be approved. And then soon after the commission approves those grant awards in late May, Civic Arts staff will notify applicants with the acceptance or decline letters. These are the four review criteria that panelists will use to evaluate your application. And these are included in the guidelines. And as we um, saw there in each part of your application, they're listed. And I really recommend making sure you become very familiar with the, with these because this is the, the standards by which your panelists will be reviewing your application. Each review criteria is weighted. So you'll see that the scores panelists give in these areas might be worth more or less of your total score depending on um, the percentage of the score they, that corresponds to each one. So for example, the capital need is worth 25% of your total score. Planning and implementation is worth 30% accessible community impact worth 20, and then cultural equity is worth 25% of the score. This is the scoring scale that panelists will use in conjunction with the review criteria we just saw, and they will assign a numerical value to each review criteria using this rubric. And then with the weighted scores, the final scores will be averaged between all panelists who reviewed the application. So um, each of these four review criteria will get a number and then it will give um, each panelist's um, score for your application. And then those, uh, those scores will be averaged. Okay, so uh, I wanna give some general grant writing tips, uh, I would definitely recommend and hear every grant cycle from our grant panelists uh, that specificity is key. Um, also, don't assume panelists will know your organization or your organization, its work. Um, and this goes along with the specificity. Uh, just keep in mind that the panelists are from all over the Bay Area and come from different backgrounds and are from different artistic disciplines. Um, so you want to make sure that you are making everything clear to a panelist who may not know about your organization or your work. I also recommend starting your application early. The applications are open right now, so you could start it today if you want to, or if you haven't already. Um, I also recommend having someone else review your application answers. And that second set of eyes will always uh, be a good idea and help review your application answers for clarity, something that may seem very obvious to you. Um, having a, a fresh set of eyes on it might be beneficial. Um, I also want to note there are description fields connected to each of your work sample file uploads. And I just recommend using these uh, to indicate where you'd like the panelists to pay close attention in the work sample, especially for those larger work samples. Um, let's see. And then uh, I also recommend not waiting until the last minute to either start or submit your application. We cannot accommodate for any hardware, software, or internet issues that you may have on the day of the deadline and no extensions will be given. Um, I think there's, there's about a month left for this application. So please utilize this time um, and start and complete your application early. Okay, so 
There are several ways to get help with your application, but first and foremost, please read the guidelines. You'll likely find the answer to your questions there. You can also check out our Frequently Asked Questions document on our website. You can email me or you can schedule a 15 minute virtual appointment uh, for an audio or video call over Zoom. And you can use this, uh, you can uh, use Calendly. Um, there's a link to it in the guidelines and on our website. And you can select a time that works best for you to schedule that meeting. The image on the left is what that interface looks like. Um, I also want to make you aware that even though I can answer any questions that you have about the application, I can't review your application answers and then provide feedback. And unfortunately, we don't have any um, sample applications for you to review. And then lastly, I want to remind you if you have questions that are specific to your submittable account and using your submittable account, you want to contact Submittable's customer service um, through that link. Okay, this concludes the presentation portion of the webinar. My contact information is on the screen to the left. And again, all of our technical assistance resources are available on our website. And that's also where you can find the link to apply to this grant program. So I will go ahead and start um, answering questions.